So Baz, this, this talk is mainly for you, uh, some direction for you to follow, I don't know. Um, I don't know exactly um, what you have planned, but I'm really excited to see how it, how it turns out with Magnetosphere Evolution uh, videos. Um, I, some thoughts I just wanted to uh, to share with you that I think are very important. Um, when I when I sort of like let you do your own thing, it's not that I'm I doubt your skills as a graphics design artist or your ability to illuminate a lot of very difficult concepts. I'm more or less doubting my own ability to understand this branch of the of the theory. Magnetosphere evolution is an enormous branch of the theory, and it's so incredibly important that I want to make sure that I can do it justice in my own mind. But before I can start studying it, it's going to help me tremendously to see you visual, see it in a visual form. And that being said, um, some goals here and some uh, notes that I think you should understand. Um, I think a disclaimer should be at the beginning of the video so that people can search for the ideas outside of the scope of mainstream. I, I think the main goal for the Magnetosphere Evolution video is to break people free of the dogma and to give them new ideas. Me, you, everybody that sees the video to give them new ideas about how a lot of this could operate, how a lot of the stars could evolve, and some possibilities there when it comes to um, star birth, galaxy evolution, all that stuff. Because the mainstream is lost, and we all know this. Um, <clears throat> uh, remain focused. I think you're doing an excellent job. Keep up the great work. I know you have other people you're doing graphics work for. Uh, that's, that's incredibly important. Keep those, keep those going as well. Uh, don't, don't, uh, don't get too stressed out if you're not accomplishing what you want to accomplish. Just go at your own pace. Uh, we have a lot of time on our hands. Um, another thing is I want to clarify from a lot of my listeners, because this is going to be a very big theory in the future, and I just want to make sure I can clarify in a, in a video here. Our enemies are not people. They are ideas that prevent our curiosity, and groupthink is something you can learn to study. Uh, what's happened, I see, with a lot of astronomers is that to get along, to get funding, to get acceptance, they have to kind of agree with one another. And that's extremely dangerous because it ruins our ability to be curious about the world around us. And that's the antithesis of what it means to be a scientist. If you're inside of a group as a scientist, and you're not allowed to free will and make up another idea that hasn't existed before because your peers or colleagues are ridiculing you, that's not the environment you want to be in. Those are natural scientists. Those are assholes who don't belong doing science. And the fact that they could push people in that direction simply because another person has an alternative idea or way of looking at it, that's, that's just a sad state of affairs and we need to we need to stretch that out to include the fact that yeah they are ridiculing them but the ridiculers aren't the enemies okay i need to make it clear they're just afraid they're afraid of new ideas they're afraid of uh their careers being damaged their reputations being damaged they're afraid of their credibility uh being damaged but unfortunately in times of extreme change Credibility has a way of morphing, and I guess what I'm saying is I'm trying to make it to where the people's credibility can morph in a safe fashion so their careers aren't threatened. And I've learned this over time. I've, it's, a more, it's a more human aspect to it. At first I was, you know, to hell with these assholes, you know? Like, who cares what they fucking think? But now I'm realizing that, yes, they are people... And they deserve a benefit of a doubt because there's a lot of pressure for them to perform and to sort of go along with the flow so they can have careers and, you know, put food on the table and, and whatnot. So I'm kind of easing back on that sort of uh, aggressive stance and adopting more of a, of a compassionate understanding stance. And I suggest to people who watch these videos that do, do the same and keep that in mind. Another really interesting part, uh, Baz, this is especially for you. 
look how propaganda works, and there's a lot of it. Study easy to digest photos, which are simple but powerful illustrations. Uh, I'm in my brother's library, and I was searching around a few places. Uh, it's kind of, it's, this book, crazy. There's lots of powerful propaganda in here. Um, they can convince people to do really, really horrible things. Uh, and I suggest studying propaganda, not because we want to copy it, to mimic it, per se, but to sort of understand how it spreads and how ideas spread and look at how the, um, look at how the scientific establishment sort of tries to skew people's minds into believing certain ideas through, you know, uh, repetition, like if you tell a lie big enough and you repeat it enough times, people will start to believe it and they won't ever question it. And that's basically the essence of how we got it all wrong in astronomy. They told a big enough lie and they told it enough times before everybody ends up believing it. And that lie is that Earth is something different than the stars and it's not. It's a very old star. Uh, for those who are new to this theory, Stellar evolution is planet formation. It's the same process. So there's going to be a big upheaval in the astronomy departments across the planet. <laughs> but there's nothing really I can do now. The train's already left the station. Um, as well, study the myth, the myth of genius, the myth of greathood. There's no such thing as genius to me. I, I think you have some people who are more passionate than others, some people who think more than others, some people who sort of like, uh, they're more focused than others. But to say somebody's a genius, that word has a very negative connotation for me because it doesn't come that simple. It's not like I woke up in the morning one day and I was like, boom, a theory. No, it's, it's taken a lot of hard work. It's taken a lot of trials and tribulations and suffering on my part, emotional, emotional and mental and uh, substance issues, but it's definitely been a hard road. Um, so study the myth of genius. One thing that, uh, stuck out to me, I was looking at this propaganda book here and, um, it's very, it's very easy to just paint somebody as the savior. I'm not a savior. I've had people ridicule me online saying, oh, well, he thinks he has a savior complex. No, I don't have a savior complex. I have an intense drive to understand the world around me and the people who are getting in my way are the astronomers themselves, but they're not enemies. It's just the ideas they have are wrong and they need to be corrected immediately. And it's as simple as that. They, had, they have a wrong, a wrong understanding of nature and they need to be replaced either with their ideas and if their ideas can't be replaced, then they need to be replaced. And we need to teach people that the world is much different than what we're being told it is. We have a fantastic universe in front of us. And a lot of the ideas that are still teaching these kids are wrong. We need to correct them immediately. Um, and this goes along with a bigger picture that I wanted to share as well. I don't know if you guys realize this. Particle physics is dead. Uh, it died back in 2012. There is no future for the particle physicists. Uh, what we have to do now is study uh, material science. That's where the bread and butter is going to be. So there's going to be a lot of uh, young, curious people who are going to be studying material sciences and going into things like aeros the aerospace industry and the space industry, which then leads to newer and newer telescopes, more and more powerful obser observation techniques. And eventually, you know, to um, studying uh, the planets and other star systems, uh, stars, I guess, and other star systems, if you will, and understanding how much life is out there. And that's going to be that's going to be the main study over the next uh, 20 years. A lot of the other sciences are going to mold into one and it's all going to be about like what's out there. And by studying what's here and studying what's how we can get from here to there. And that's where the big transition is going to take place. So uh, keep that in mind. This is a very long-term goal. It's going to take many years. Uh, but Stellan Metamorphosis, I believe, is going to be the premier theory of the 21st century and on. 
So of course it's, it's still youthful right now. There's still people that are still learning about it for the first time, even though I've been hacking away at it for like eight years. Baz, you've been hacking away at it for a couple years too. You know, Daniel's known about Daniel Archer and a lot of people have known about it. I mean, it's, it's going to be overwhelming for me uh, to memorize everybody, but trust me, I, I have you in, I have you in my thoughts. I have you in my mind and I'm trying to make sure that I, I lead you guys in the right direction. Um, but basically that really sums up this talk, uh, Baz, study propaganda, <laughs> learn, learn as much as you can. You're the graphics guy. Uh, you can, you can visualize things and make them, make them real. Um, something I can't do. I can draw the uh, MS paint pictures. <laughs> That's about it. All right, you guys, today is October 18th, uh, 2019. Later.